are all those moments you don't feel safe. Good thing you have an iPad Pro. Helps. One of the big skeptic things that people have been talking about with the iPad Pro series, as opposed to getting a basic laptop, is this will replace it, or this won't replace the computer. I'm about to answer it for you. <clears throat> now, keep in mind this is a biased opinion. This is not for everybody on the market, and this is just my experiences, what I've dealt with with this computer. I just called it a computer. I'm gonna get to that. Um, and stuff like that. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so one of the big things that, why are people promoting it to be a computer when it really isn't? Yes and no. A lot of people believe the iPad Pro is not a computer because it doesn't have USB ports. Well, neither do a lot of laptops now, they just have USB Type-C. Of course, you can get USB ports, which is what I was just talking about. But um, here's the big thing with the iPad Pro. It doesn't come with fast charging for the 9.7 inch. And when it comes to the bigger iPad, the 12.9 inch, you don't even get a charger that will charge the iPad properly. When charging the iPad Pro, the bigger size, and this goes for even the brand new ones. Mine is over a year old. But for the ones that are out right now, so the 10.1 inch and the 12.9 inch, it's still not the right charger. This can mean several different things for your iPad. The biggest thing is if you have to get a lot of work done in a small amount of time, this is not going to be the case for you because you'll have to charge it and it takes several hours to charge with the um, 10 watt battery that comes in the package. Now separately you can buy different wattage iPad Pro charger but it has to be a USB Type-C to lightning cable so you're looking at that plus the adapter which is the one that goes in the wall outlet. So you're looking at, at the cheapest, like $60. And every time that I've seen people buy the cheaper ones, they always either melt, they have issues, unless it's not for an iPad, then they tend to be completely fine. But that kind of raises my point. So you have to buy USB cable separately so that you can plug in a flash drive to it and pull certain kinds of files. You have to get a lightning to micro SD card slot separately or an SD card slot. You have to buy those separately. So there are all these different things you have to buy separately. And it is the same thing for a lot of computers. Like even the amazing Microsoft Surface series and um, the Surface Book. So you're looking at the Surface Computer, Surface Book, Surface Pro. They don't have a whole lot of ports, new and old. So you have to get a little adapter for that too. So this has been a problem with a lot of laptops and then a lot of the lower end or a lot of the PC equivalents to both the iPad, Mac, and the Microsoft, you notice that they're about $400 cheaper or more and they have all the ports that you need. Now, they're not going to have the same performance, they're not going to be as fast, really depending on what computer you have. And then if you want to buy a cheap computer and upgrade it, which you have to make sure it can actually upgrade, then you're kind of in the ballpark of, okay, this is as fast as I need it to. But bottom line, you really don't get that much out of computers nowadays without spending at least $900. And that's a lot to say. Now, there are a lot more users out there that don't do high-end stuff. And that's primarily what the iPad Pro was made for. Those who don't do a lot of heavy work, or at least aren't, this is where I was gonna get to, my case. So, in my first year of college, the iPad Pro was absolutely everything that I needed it to be. I brought it everywhere, it was perfect. It did Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So it really did everything I needed to. And it was really easy to take notes. And I liked how easy it was to have a dual screen to work on two things at once. So 
definitely good at multitasking, definitely good at the basics of life. I use that phrase, basics of life, you guys know what I mean, right? Just tech stuff and getting like notes and everything else. And teachers actually approved of it, because if I needed to write something out, I could do that with the Apple Pencil. So you have this really nice tool, but I can't say that for everybody it's a computer. Well, it does everything that you need it to, with notes and with drawing and throwing out all the tools that you normally use because of this device. But of course there's the downside with the iPad Pro, it's not all the same applications. And a lot of it is cloud. If I type up a document and I need to upload it to the school website, there's not a problem with that. It's pretty easy to do. If you need to print something out, pretty easy to do. If you need to work on it at home and then turn in a file directly into the professor's computer, you can't do that. So what do you do? You have to buy the extra pieces in order to plug something into your iPad, take the files off, and then plug it in. Because now there are little USB adapters which are also used as flash drives. One plugs into the lightning port and then there's a USB end on the other. You don't have to plug them directly into each other because it's pretty much a flash drive that works with both your iOS device and your computer. So in a way, you can turn this um, iPad Pro into a computer, but not if you are looking for something higher end like myself, where I have to do that. You can't use regular Photoshop with the iPad Pro and that really upsets me because I use Photoshop a ton. I use it for school, I use it for the show, I, I use it for a lot of stuff. And I can't do that with this iPad. Now, on the side, and I actually went directly to the Apple Store because I was really upset about it, I wanted to know, can I use this in any other way close to Photoshop? And they recommended AstroPad for me. And AstroPad is an application that turns your iPad into a canvas. Now, unlike other applications, so in a way, it does everything you need it to only if you fit in this category. Now that it's been over a year with the iPad Pro, I'm definitely more comfortable with it. Now that I know where the boundaries are for the iPad of its limitations, such as what can I actually do with it that the computers at school can't do. Now, without buying extra applications and without buying these extra tools for the iPad, it will not replace your laptop and it will not replace everything that you need it to. So without all these accessories, you pretty much just have a tablet. So I think that it definitely uses as a catalyst, but it's not necessarily a solution for the cheapest option. Now the iPad Pro is not a cheap device and it costs the same much as a higher end PC, but not the maxed out versions of the PC. So not like a gaming laptop. So this iPad Pro, for example, was $800, $900, around there. And for accessories wise, you had to buy at least $100 more of accessories. So you're looking at over $1,000 for something that may or may not work for what you're looking for. So you have to know for a fact if you're doing high-end stuff or low-end stuff, or to know exactly what you're doing. And for the iPad Pro, for me, a lot of the basic stuff that I do works perfectly fine, but there's a lot that I can't do with Photoshop and Maya, which is really what I needed to do. iOS 11 has certainly saved the iPad Pro. I, I'm seeing them with an iPad Pro simply because of iOS 11, not because they're looking for something small and lightweight. That's really the reason why people are buying it, so that's pretty nice. But when they look at the price, they're like, why don't I just get a lower end laptop? Or a high end laptop that's the same price. So a lot of it comes down to price and then accessories. If you want to make this work, then it's actually gonna do pretty well. But if you're not willing to spend more money on the iPad Pro, you might as well use the same money you would have on that 
and buy a low-end PC or a high-end PC because it's going to do the same exact thing. Now, of course, you can't draw with it and you can't have the same accessibility on the iPad Pro than you would on those computers, but at least you would have something that would work. I noticed that it's a lot faster and a lot easier to run every program that I need to except for everything for my major on the iPad Pro. So for other classes, like my other core classes, it's really easy to access. But if I need to do Photoshop or Maya, then I'm out of luck. So really it depends on what you're using the iPad Pro for, if you'll need to use something else or use the iPad. Well, that pretty much does it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And please let me know in the comments of what you think about the iPad Pro, if you have one or you think about getting one, and any questions you might have. I'm more than happy to answer them, and yeah, I'll get to you as soon as I can. So, thank you so much for watching.